Here on the DIY Volts channel, I frequently do electronic stuff, as you would expect, and I've just been using a standard multimeter and actually even using an LED light panel to determine if something is pure sine wave output. Well, I've decided to up my game on my diagnostic equipment. And so I have got this right here. It is the FNIRSI, and the model is the 2C53T. That's a lot to say. This has both an oscilloscope and a multimeter in it, and I figured we would uh, pull this out of the box and check it out real quick. And you will see uh, this in several videos in the future as I am doing diagnostic stuff on equipment. So let me go ahead and open the box and we will take a look at this piece of equipment. Included with this product, you get a rigid padded carrying case, which is nice. It's big enough to hold everything. A user manual that's gonna be very handy to keep. It's got a charging cable, as you see right there. It's got the alligator clips, and then it's got the other standard clips for the multimeter side of this. Moving on to the oscilloscope side, you can bring out these leads. As you can see here, there's also a little information there on this packet. It has some various colors and a screwdriver. And then lastly, there is the multimeter and oscilloscope product right here. Let's take a quick look at the 2C53T. So here is the front panel where the majority of your work is going to be done. There is a screen here. You've got several buttons to look at. You got left, right, up, down, play, pause there in the middle. Power button, auto, channel one for the oscilloscope. You've got the move and you've got select, trigger, PRM, channel two for oscilloscope, save and menu. I believe menu is also the back button, so we'll get into that here in just a bit. Down here on the bottom, you've got your typical multimeter input, output. So you've got 10 amp, you've got milliamp, you've got your comm, and you've got uh, your volts, ohms, continuity, all the other things you'll be using on this side over here. So if we move down to the bottom, it's got a rubber base to it. And that's good because on the back, if you pull up the kickstand down here, that'll allow you to keep this here and it's limited uh, moving because of that rubber. So that's good to know. You can also mount this on a hook on the wall right there. On the top, you've got your COM1, COM2, and then your signal output here as well. I was looking and the alligator clip that I showed earlier, I believe is gonna go uh, there in your uh, output. Uh, as far as the sides go, there is USB charging on this side. You just pop the tab up and you'll be able to get to uh, that right there. Let's test out the features of the multimeter first. I'm going to long press the power button and it's gonna turn the unit on, as you can see here. Now when it first comes up, it's gonna ask you if you want to do the oscilloscope or the multimeter. It's got settings or the signal generator here. And uh, oscilloscope is right there. So I'm gonna go over here to settings and we're going to look at those real quick. In the settings, you can adjust the language. You can adjust the sound and the light. So if I click into that by pressing menu, I can increase the sound volume. I think for now I'm gonna keep that down on the lowest. I can go down here and also adjust the screen brightness. Now on the startup on boot, you can do none where you have to pick what you want or you can do where it will automatically adjust to multimeter, the oscilloscope or the signal generator. Let's do a multimeter here. You can go down to the auto shutdown Knowing myself, I'm gonna to want to put that on probably 15 minutes here. Otherwise it will drain the battery. We're now in the multimeter section. I'm gonna get my cables connected here. They do have a protective cover on them. The black one here is gonna go into COM. And uh, for now, let's put the other end over here on the volts and continuity. I've loaded the multimeter setting here. I'm gonna go ahead and do some testing. Now it's set to auto right now, but I'm going to press over one time and it has turned on voltage. Now it says DC voltage up top, so I'm gonna press the move button here 
and it's gonna move over to AC voltage with the Hertz value. So whenever I plug this up to my grid power, we should see that this is gonna say 120 and 60 Hertz. Now, if I move over again, we're now on the continuity. So I can now touch these probes together and hear a beep. There we go, that's a good sign. Over here, we've got resistance. There we go, that's working. Over here on this setting, I've got the temperature. It currently says 79 degrees. I believe that's a little bit too warm right now. Uh, my room should be closer to 70. And we've got 26 degrees Celsius. Now I'm going to go into oscilloscope mode by pressing here in the middle. And as you can see, it's got channel two in blue and channel one in yellow up here. Now to see a waveform, I'm going to uh, touch the uh, receptacle here. I've already got uh, the grounding there. Let's see what we got here. All right, and as you can see, there is a waveform, 59 or 60 Hertz right there. So it is showing up properly. And that's exactly what we were hoping to see. So very good, that seems to be working. Now this tool is capable of all kinds of things, but I wanna show you one more, and that is the signal generator. So let's hold down the menu key here and go over to signal. So here we are. Let's go in here and let's pick something like a square wave. We can click okay to that and we can change. So let's just go into here and change from four to like, I don't know, seven. There you go. All right, and so now if we uh, go back into the oscilloscope mode, we will be able to uh, connect the signal generator cable up here to the top. And now if I use my oscilloscope leads, we can then see that signal produced here. I touch these together. Let's push the auto button. It's going to analyze and then we will be able to see that we now have a square wave here. So very nice. The signal generator is doing what it's supposed to. If you look in here, frequency seven, like just like we said it. There are the basic features of this diagnostic tool. I will have a link to this in the description down below if you wanna check out more information. The majority of what I will be using this for is to make sure something has a pure sine wave inverter, such as uh, this power box back here, and also, of course, multimeter stuff. I don't do too much with signal generators, but uh, the other two things that are in here will be much appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Seth with DIY Volts, and I will see you in the next video.